Hello, happy new year. Welcome to 2024 and welcome to Hibs TV for our coverage of Hibs versus Motherwell. The action begins from three o'clock today, live here from Easter Road. Yes, hello, welcome to Hibs TV. Welcome to our coverage. We're building up for two Hibs against Motherwell, which kicks off at three o'clock here at Easter Road. My name's Gavin Ritchie and I'm delighted to be joined by a true Hibs legend himself, a man who's played over 600 games for the club, won several trophies, and of course managed the club as well. Is of course Pat Stanton. Pat, happy new year. How are you? Same to yourself. Yeah, fine, great. How was your How was your festive period? What did you get up to over Hogmanay? Uh, it was, it was all over that quick, you know. And uh, but the, the kids make it, you know. The the grandchildren up visiting you and things like that. It's uh, the, the kids make it. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, it's great to see you. It's great to have you to look ahead to, to this game against Motherwell. But before we start, I wanted to look a bit back on on 2023 as a whole for for Hibs. What, what did you make of it? Because it was certainly a year of, of ups and downs, highs and lows. Yeah, it's just exactly what you said, you know, and it's, it was new for everybody and you were just having to adapt and uh, just get on with things. No point in uh, wanting it to be otherwise than what it was. So it's just uh, it's just experience for the players. A lot of games coming uh, thick and fast. Um, not much to separate the teams at the moment in mm -hmm. the league, but uh, like I say, it's uh, something that's not happened before. You just got to just adapt to it. Mm -hmm. What were your, some of your highlights from 2023 on, on the pitch? I think bringing young players through. You mm -hmm. know, young players getting a chance. I think that's a good thing. That mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, uh, future Hibs players will be looking at it and say, you know, that's that's a place that you can go and people will give you a chance. You know, you, you look at uh, some teams, Hibs do it as well. Uh, they need a player. They, they go and buy one. Um, years ago, they just promoted somebody from the reserves. Mm -hmm. Didn't always work, but at least people looking at it say, "Well, look, you got you get an opportunity there. That's a, a club that's worth listening to." Yeah, that, and that's certainly the case with, with, with Nick Montgomery in charge. He's that's really been part of his, of his philosophy, almost bringing through young players. He gave Roy Whittaker his his debut, became the youngest ever player to play for Hibs, and the likes of Josh Landers, Rudy Monotnikov, also also being involved in, in a lot of match day squads this season. Yeah, exactly, and they've come in and done well, and it's, it's an example for other young players to say, well, that's the way for me, it gives them a wee bit of incentive, um, but uh, it's like everything, you know, it, it doesn't suit everybody. Yeah, for sure, but well, certainly a year of highs and lows, and, and the year closed out with the Edinburgh Derby, of course, on the 27th, here's a reminder of how the action unfolded in that one. Five inside it's for Hearts as Hibs are forced to defend another set piece early on here as Cochrane goes long towards the near post. It's flicked on. Shankler will try and bring this one down. And he's able to get it clear. Yeah, there's a, an arm out. Um, and it does hit the arm of Rocky Bashiri there, but I've seen these given, Daniel, unfortunately. Yeah, and, yeah, unfortunately, I think we know which way this is going. John Beaton points to the spot with four and a half minutes gone and David Marshall asked to make a big save in the early stages here Shankland with the staggered run up hits the post and it goes behind and Easter Road rises well Shankland doesn't miss many from the spot but so early on in the game a huge opportunity for Stephen A. Smith's side Jordan will beat it on the far side Shire with the give and go Space for Obita to run into, and he's got the beating of his man here. Goes for the early ball, and it falls here. What a chance! Oh, what the block is a handball. The referee says yes. What colour of card is this going to be? Is the penalty is awarded? Venta had the shot and goal, and Rose clearly handballs that. Now, Joel, well, it's the yellow card that's coming for Kai Rose here. Martin Boyle places the ball on the spot. Three goals against Hearts, two Premiership goals this season and in the 15th minute of the game it's Hibs now who have the chance to take the lead in the derby. Oh it's saved onto the post, there's the rebound, it could still come for Hibs. Unbelievable stuff here, Hearts are going to get this clear and we've had two penalties and they've both been missed in a fascinating start to this Edinburgh derby. I have to give credit to Xander Clark, that is an excellent save. 
Shankland, though, he's got onto this. It's Shankland into the box. He scored. And after sustaining so much pressure in the second half, Lauren Shankland looks out of nothing to have scored the winning goal in the derby to silence Easter Road. Yeah, absolutely out of nowhere, Daniel. A long ball up the pitch, a break of the ball, and Lauren Shankland, to his credit, finishes well to David Marshall's right-hand side, but we need to be doing better there, defending the, the long ball. Yes, well, Pat, it was an absolutely a sucker punch at the end, really, that gave Hearts all three points. How difficult a result was that one to take? Well, the, the local rivalry and it's a derby game, and um, but the game lasts as long as the referee doesn't blow his whistle. And I think maybe we were caught sleeping a wee bit there. It could, that could have been avoided mm -hmm. with somebody just, for the want of them, kick the ball out of the park mm -hmm. and the referee will blow for full time. And you can you know the, re the game's coming to an end because the crowd are whistling, people are making their way up the gantries and things. Mm -hmm. You know that, that it's, you know just a, a minute or something, but uh, so you've really got to pay attention. And uh, at that stage, I don't think we were. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because the game that there wasn't really much between the, the sides really. Both both teams, as we saw there, they missed penalties, and it looked like it was kind of heading for no no John. In the end, like you said, it was either it's that lack of concentration and. And you can't give a man like like Lauren Shankland time and, and space in, in the box because he, he's, he's a great player. Well, he's a very good player, and like you say, you don't need, you don't give him any encouragement at all. And uh, he probably couldn't believe his luck when the, that situation arose. But mm -hmm. like I say, if, if in my day, if you if you weren't sure what was going to happen, you just aim it to the back row of the mm -hmm. the, the, the stand. How, how will the manager then pick up the the, the players after such a, a difficult? result and, and as a player yourself and a manager after a t tough result did you just kind of want to get back out and rectify it immediately yeah that's that's it. it's the only way to do it you know just uh feeling one thing feeling sorry for yourself won't help you know just the, it's happened learn off it and just approach it again and uh if it happens again you know and you, you say to yourself oh yeah i remember a game like this before where we we just we, we weren't paying attention to me we, we, we paid the price and it's, a, it's just experience, mm -hmm. but uh, it's a painful experience at times. Yeah, for sure. Here's hoping we can get another or three points today to kind of start this year off o on the right foot. We'll take a quick look at, at the league table just now because it is it is really really tight at, at the moment. We're still, as you can see, they're still sitting in that sixth position. But because we didn't play at the weekend, we now got a couple of game games in hand. How important is it that, that we do start start to climb the the, the table and? and you know, still well in the hunt for third place. Yeah, this this stage of the the, the league, you, this is when you just start to start getting the, getting the points in. You know, early on in the season, the start of the season, you you maybe slip up here and there, but nobody's really getting away from you. You know, a couple of results gets you back up the league. A uh, couple of results gets you back down again, mm -hmm. and it's just uh, apart from the, the teams at the very top, uh, they, they've got their their own way to go almost. Mm -hmm. Whereas the rest have got to uh, get points w against one another. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we have seen the, the season that kind of anybody can beat anyone. Um, we'll take a look at, at today's fixtures now because we, we've got uh, another full card here in Scotland. Obviously, we, we play Motherwell here at, at Easterwell, but there's a, a full card there. Pat, any, any fixtures there that, that, that stick out to you in particular? I find that we're on a, a game when Hibs are playing and I'm at the game, and I don't pay much attention <laughs> to anybody else, you know, because it's you, you know you know you know the likelihood is something going in your favour. Mm -hmm. But because uh, you, you see something, you come at the end, end of the game and results have gone for you, uh, but uh, don't count on them mm -hmm. because as it gets nearer the end of the season, you tend to find that these things don't go your way. You, it's another. It's mm -hmm. a, not just a drawback. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's almost about just controlling the controllables, control what 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 you can do, and, and, and let everyone else kind of take care of themselves. That's right. And be in a position if they if they slip up, you're in a position to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, if they get a couple of bad results, you start to push away from them. But uh, and when the game's over, it's over. You know, you learn from it. Um, no point uh, dwelling on spilt milk because uh, 
like I say, nobody's going to feel sorry for you. Yeah, for sure. Right, not long till kick-off now. We're going to take a short break, but don't go anywhere. When we come back, we'll hear from hip striker Dylan Venti and get the main thoughts from the main man himself, the manager. Simplexity Travel is made up of some of London's leading bespoke travel managers. Simplexity specialise in luxury travel services for corporate and private clients, groups and individuals who lead busy lives. Simplexity will simplify challenging schedules and complex trip itineraries, ensuring our clients always travel with complete peace of mind and in perfect luxury. Simplexity Travel, making luxury travel simple. Yes, hello and welcome back to our coverage. We're counting down to kick off here at Easter Road. It's Hibs against Motherwell. Pat, I wanted to take a, a quick look at, at today's visitors, Motherwell. What, what have you made of them this season? It's it's difficult, uh, you know, when you're like say, teams and other teams in the league. But they look to me, they look like a, a strong side. Mm -hmm. You know, they're physically strong, and uh, that's the, one of the things you've got to match match them first and foremost. Uh, in any game, for you to get and go on and play your own game, mm -hmm. you've got to take care of that. And there's no point standing about letting them get the ball, and you've got to make it hard for them. Yeah, they come into this one off the back of, of a, an important victory. They beat Livingston 3 1, a much needed victory, in fact. It was their their first win after a run of 15 games without one. How important was that win for them, and how much confidence will they take going into this one? Yeah. Yeah, I think and I think they played well, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll, they'll have taken a lot out of that. And you can see teams changing almost overnight. They, they start to get a wee bit of belief in themselves. But uh, any teams that come that comes come to this ground, you know, they've got to they've got to earn what they get. Mm -hmm. uh, and you make sure that they've got if, if they get it, they've, they've really earned it. But uh, when you're at home, you're you're, you're looking to a, a good performance. You're looking to win. Yeah, and, and is that the main thing for for you is, is trying to match them physically today, or, or what do you do you think that we need to do to make sure that we get the right result today? I think uh, you you start when the game starts. You know, you don't start into the game. You you know, twenty minutes into the game, you start playing. You've got to 
contest the ball right the very first time and if you win that just you one of your players wins a challenge right at the start of the game mm -hmm. the rest of the team sees that and the opposition see that and you see you, that's the way you set your stall out uh, and it does have an effect on players it doesn't matter who they are well, things uh, maybe in what got to, this is going to be hard here and uh, if they're coming here expecting a hard game you make sure you don't disappoint them mm -hmm. is, is that is that how you played the game as a player? Did you always was it a case of winning your individual batters or, or, or getting that kind of that, that first positive positive action in the game? Yeah, I think not, normally if you, anybody is sort of in direct opposition to you, if you if you gave him a challenge, you know, not not maiming the guy, but just mm. a, a strong challenge, he knows and you know, mm -hmm. and it's a, yeah, you intend to make sure that that happens for the rest of the game. Mm -hmm. But if it goes the other way and he he wins the ball. The rest of his team see that, and it's it's it, it's maybe not important to people, but the players on the park, uh, you're just posting a wee message that yeah, uh, yeah. we're not here for the just to stand and watch it. Exactly, yeah, small small margins indeed. Of, co of course, this is the second time that the two sides have met. Here's a reminder of how the action unfolded last time at Fir Park. Spittle wins it in the centre circle for Muller. We all know did forward by Newell. Substitute on the far side for Muller. Well, inside the penalty area, cuts it back. Wilkinson is there. The work was done by the substitute, Bire. He out-muscled Stevenson from the far side, got into the penalty area. Wilkinson ball from Kelly's clearance, Dodge holds it in nicely for Henderson, he runs into trouble though in the shape of Slattery, long ball forward, chance here for Motherwell, a substitute again, oh, good footwork, maybe just doing a little bit too much but it doesn't matter because he's turned the Hibs defence inside out as the substitute Mika Beere and buried the ball in the bottom left hand corner beyond David Marshall, Motherwell two hibs nil, and I hate to say it Kevin but I think that might be that, caused too much of a threat, it's a decent ball in from handball. Obita, good defending though from Motherwell, that looked like a handball, well, it's come off Doidge's head and it has hit Casey's hand, his hands above so his head, can he give Hibs a lifeline, if Andre steps up he does, that's a cracking penalty kick, right in the back of the net beyond Liam Kelly so six minutes Hibs get one back Maybe at least five minutes of the additional six remaining here so well Pat a lot has changed since then that was, that was back in, in in August but I mean we've had a change of managers since then there's, there's been a lot of changes to, to, to the, the, the team a, a, as well and um, what do we need to do today to make sure that, that we don't have a repeat of, of, of what happened and for a part because it, it was it was a, it was a poor performance last time out yeah you, you, you learn from the the, the previous uh, encounter and it's, it's just up to the players to go out and play the best they can you mm -hmm. know and like I say when the when the game starts you start mm -hmm. but uh, yeah there's been games where Hibs have looked, they've looked really good mm -hmm. And then there's been a couple of occasions where I thought the first half they played well, half time came, half time's a break in the game mm -hmm. and they've maybe come out and maybe not picked it up as quickly as they did the first half but you've got to be aware of that, you know, you've got to start the way you finished. Mm -hmm. Obviously that, that game was was under uh, the former manager Lee Johnson, that Montgomery has since come in, certainly steadied the, sh the ship. What, what have you made uh, of Nick since, since he joined the club which was back in September? They're, they're they're well organised. Mm -hmm. They're well organised, and he's obviously he's got his own ideas and uh, what changes he's going to make, and he's obviously keeping that close to his chest. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think he's the type of chap that if you're willing to do it for the club, he'll give you the chance to do it. Yeah, for sure. And at the end of the day, if you you haven't done it, him giving you the chance, then it's it's not his fault. Mm -hmm. You've been given the opportunity. It's up to you to take it. Yeah. We mentioned there's been changes in, in, in personnel uh, in terms of team use for today. But we'll be without the likes of, of Lewis Miller, Martin Boyle, Rocky Bashiri, Jojo Wallacott, who are all away um, on international duty. 
I guess it's it's a good chance for for some players who might not have been getting game time to set up, or, or even for the young players as well this afternoon. That's right. It's it just like you say, it's an opportunity um, for the young players to get in there, or somebody who's been sitting on the sidelines, and the the, man, the new manager coming in, and he, he's maybe not played these guys or wasn't playing them, and uh, he maybe think to himself, well, what am I be waiting on here? Mm. These guys are quite capable, you know. But uh, the trouble with we, we bringing in so many players into a, a game, they, they, they play maybe play the lifter game, and then the next game they forget to lift their game. You've got to do it all the time, mm. and uh, over a period of two or three games, you get a, a clearer picture. Uh, if you go by what you see in one ninety minutes, you're maybe not, you're not getting a, a true picture. Yeah, it's all about that, that consistency. Indeed. Right, time for another short break. But when we come back, we'll hear from one person who is in the starting team today, that's Dylan Venti, and we'll hear from Nick Montgomery as well. When it comes to things that are exclusive to Scotland, we all have a thing or two to say. They're amazing. They blew me away. Superb. Excellent customer service from start to finish. First class service every time. 10 out of 10. A fantastic sales exec. Nothing was too much trouble. Outstanding. I wouldn't go anywhere else now. Just some of the things that have been said about us. Macklin Motors, exclusive to Scotland. Coffee. Thank you. I love this film. I'm doing all of this on my way to Mum's. Because it's all possible on an LNER train. Next stop, London. And I'm almost there. Right, not long to go till kick-off here at Easter Road. It's time to get the thoughts from Dylan Vente. He's been speaking to Matthew Newton. Dylan, it's been a difficult few days after a, a really tough derby defeat to take. Um, but full attention has now turned to Motherwell in a few days' time. How has training been in the build-up to this one? Yeah, uh, you know, the start of the day is always uh, a bit difficult, but we know uh, there's a next uh, game coming, so uh, we know it's hard to lose uh, the last game, but yeah, we have to move on and go on, and uh, yeah, the next game is Motherwell. How do the team do that then? How do we bounce back? Uh, yeah, uh, what I said just after meeting in this morning and um, of course the way how we lose is uh, it's hard to take but yeah, you have to go on and um, yeah, this morning uh, we stepped on the pitch and uh, yeah, that is one thing and we have to focus on, on the next game. It's the last game before the winter break coming up. How important is it to, to get a, not only a positive result, but also a positive performance ahead of that winter break? Yeah, it's the last game of uh, 
yeah, before the break. So uh, we all, I think, we all uh, want to win, uh, to win, uh, yeah, the last game, in in a good way. Um, so yeah, we have to prepare for it and yeah, just go uh, for the win. Yeah, as you say, Motherwell up next, who have been on a on a tough run themselves. What what do you expect from them coming into this game? Um, yeah, uh, I think we have to dominate. Uh, uh, be dominant in the game, like um, that. We have to ball and we have to find the solutions. And um, yeah, uh, I think we have more to look to ourselves than uh, to the opponent. So um, yeah, uh, it's our job to uh, yeah to take uh, take a good result uh, in the game. That was the pre-match thoughts from Hib striker Dylan. Venter, uh, Pat, uh, we need a, a, another big performance from him today. Yes, uh, he, he'll be anxious to do that as well, mm. you know, but uh, he's a good player. And the thing is, if you're a good player, show everybody that you are mm. a good player, you know, no, don't uh, hide away on the pitch, but just have confidence in yourself mm. and uh, the people will get behind you. Yeah, for sure, because he made a, a great start to, 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 light, to life at, at, at Hibs and he obviously won a penalty at, at, against Hearts. How much do you think for a striker, is it, is, it, is it a confidence thing scoring goals, do you think? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You get spells where the players, and real good players, dry up for a wee spell, you know, but they, they come back again. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just, uh, don't be frightened of going in looking for chances, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a couple of the lads w w walking p past uh, just now. Right, time to get the pre-match thoughts from Nick Montgomery. I caught up with him earlier. Nick, I imagine it's been a, a tough couple of days. Can you just sum up how the mood's been in the, the dressing room and how important is it to bounce back with a result against Motherwell? Yeah, it's a real kick in the guts um, to, to lose the, the game in the manner we, we did, the 94th minute. You know, it's my first first game at Easter Road. Uh, that loss, so it, was, it wasn't a nice feeling. Uh, afterwards in the dressing room, the boys are... Uh, you know, a, a devastated and that, that one really hurt. Um, but yeah, I don't think we, did, we didn't deserve to lose a game. No, I think the stats tell you that we had double the amount of goal attempts than they had, but it's just one, one, one lapse of concentration and, and one moment of quality, which I said after the game. So you know, I think both teams lacked a little bit of quality in that final third, you know, to really, to really uh, take, take chances when they came. But you no, know, it was frantic. It was, it was a, real, a real derby, um, a lot of passion, um, real, uh, real quick game. But yeah, we have to move on and, and yeah, it hurt, hurt after the game, it hurt yesterday, but we're back in training today and yeah, the, the mood's good and we're preparing for Motherwell because that's, uh, that's the next game. Yeah, how do you go about, about lifting the mid after a game like that? Oh, we went through the review this morning and, and yeah, there was a lot, of, a lot of positive stuff and again, not, not much in the game. You know, the stats were, were mostly in favour of, of us, um, but stats don't win a game of football and you know, we know we needed to be a little bit better in that final third and you know, maybe uh, the, the penalty goes in. You know, or he doesn't handball it and, and Venti gets a goal and things could have been different, but you know, we disappointed that we, uh, we didn't see the game out. And um, I think both teams would have been happy to take a point, but had a good bunch of lads, you know. We, uh, we have uh, difficult moments and that was a difficult moment, but what was important today is that we, that we you know, look back on, on the game and then we move on, we train today and start preparing for Motherwell. Looking ahead to, to that game then, what, what do you expect from Motherwell? The, the kind of had a big dip in form in the last couple of weeks but it'll be another tough game like every game is in this league yeah every game in this league is, is a is a competitive uh, game so we don't expect anything different and yeah, they'll be coming um, you know looking to get a result before the break and, and I suppose everyone playing uh, games before this uh, winter break coming up will want to go out on on a decent decent performance and a decent result so I don't expect anything other than a tough game in terms of team news then we spoke about Josh Campbell after the game but have you got any update or the latest on him yeah, so Josh is going to be out for a number of weeks. I think he's, he has to have a scan in the next couple of days. And once we have the scan, then we should have some real clarity on how long he's going to be out. But you know, first uh, first review is it's not as bad as, as we first thought. So fingers crossed for Josh and for us, because we really light on bodies at the minute that yeah, it's not a long one. Several other players that will miss the Motherwell game, the likes of Boyle, Lewis Miller, Rocky Bashir as well, who, who are away in, in the Asian Cup. I, do you see that as almost a double-edged sword, sword? Obviously difficult to, to lose them, but it can also create an opportunity for some other players. Yeah, look, firstly, you know, we, we asked if the, the boys could stay um, you know, for, the, for the game and go the next day, but um, I think uh, you know, the, the, the national teams have the, uh, the right to, to bring them on the first, and, and that means that we'll, that we'll miss them for that game. So, yeah, for, 
for them, for us, it's as a club to have players playing international football is good, but also to to miss miss players is, is hard, especially when we're you know we're so light on bodies. But it's also an opportunity for some players to come in that have maybe been on the fringes, and more more the young boys to get an opportunity to be in the squad. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate your time. No worries. Thank you. That was the Hibs head coach. Nick Montgomery giving his thoughts ahead of this one. Pat, he, he was clearly disappointed after the result in the Edinburgh Derby, but from a momentum point of view, how important is it that we get a positive result today, especially with the winter break coming off and when you've got two weeks without a game after that? Yeah, that, that game was disappointing. The manager's obviously disappointed as well, but uh, he, he kept a, a wee bit of lid on it, you know. Mm. But uh, the thing is, it's, that's in the past. It's the next game up today. And uh, that's the one that you, you tr take care of. Mm -hmm. Talking about today, then uh, I'm going to put put you on on the spot here. What are you thinking? Score predictions? How are we going to kick off 2024? I would just like to see Hibs getting what they deserve. Um, and I think in the last two or three games, they've been a wee bit unlucky at certain periods mm -hmm. of the game. Uh, I win here today would uh, do do them the world of good. Would. Can I push you for a score? Um, as long as Hibs win. <laughs> a Hibs win. Pat's going for a Hibs win. Let us know your thoughts on social media using the Twitter handle at HibernianFC. Tweet us your score predictions. I'm afraid that's pretty much all we've got time for today. Thank you, Pat. Thank you very much for your company uh, this afternoon. Thanks very much to everyone at home for watching and we'll see you all again very soon.